Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dig in. So I've already got my cloth set up in the modifier stack. And if you're unsure about that, do check out my other video where I show you how I put this all together. And I've basically set it up as a cotton fabric. I'm also in the shading tab. And as opposed to my solid materials, I've split this um, vertically so you can see the drape of the fabric. I've also got a principled shader applied and I'm in the rendered view uh, on the fabric. So let's dig in. First up, we're going to press Shift A and search for a UV map. And we're going to connect that to the base color of the principled shader. And you can see it does all sorts of weird stuff. Now, so that you can see better what's going on while I'm creating this, I'm actually going to switch to the top view and, um, oh, where's it gone? There we go. Hang on. Let's get rid of that. Let's bring that back in. And um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Switch to top view and I've gone right back to the start of my timeline uh, because obviously when you're doing fabrics, you tend to bake them so that they drape. Uh, so we've now got a solid surface if I show you that there you go so that would be the start and that would be the end so let's dig in oops I need top view don't I right so UV map we also need a value node I won't set that value just yet I'm going to need a vector math node drop that on the line that connects the UV map to the principal shader Connect up the value to the vector here. And then let's pop, it, pop in, let's say 100 for now. Change this value to scale. And then we need a separate XYZ node. Pop that in here. Now we need to start uh, putting things together in terms of the strips. So we're going to start by getting ourselves two math nodes, one here and one here. Let's just shift this across. I'm going to take the Y value into the top of the first math node and then connect up the two math nodes and then we're going to add a third math node, which will actually connect these all together before they go into the base color. So there's our X and there's our Y. I'm going to duplicate these and connect the X values. So we've now got these two controlling the X value and these two controlling the Y value. So we're going to change this to modulo and set the value to 2. I'm going to set this to greater than and set the value as 1. And then basically repeat that for the top two. I could have basically duplicated these after I'd made those changes, but whatever way works for you. So 2, and you can see we've already got some striping going on, and 1. Okay, now we need to connect this value to here to basically repeat what it's doing. And there we have our gingham patterning. So what I'm going to do here is select all of those nodes, press N on my keyboard, and because I've got the node wrangler enabled, click on shade selected, go up to node, Call that pattern, and then I'll drop that color down. 
So we've now boxed in the bit that we need to change for the pattern. And in actual fact, you only ever really need to change this value here. So you can see every time I change that value, it just changes the scale of the pattern. Let's put it at 100. Now we also need a way to change the actual color because we're already plugged into the base color. So for that, what we're going to do is grab an RGB node. We're going to grab an invert node and drop that on the connection between these two. And we're going to get a mix RGB node. Drop that in here. Connect the invert to the bottom slot and the color to the top. And then basically we can just adjust the color using the RGB values. Change the mix RGB to add. What's that called? There it is. And you'll see you have a nice variation between the light areas the medium areas and the dark areas as you would with a regular gingham. Now just for a bit more or a bit better result, let's change the value here to 0 0.350 and I'm going to change this factor to zero so it actually brings the whites into that area. So we've now got ultimate control really over the colouring. We can have an inverted or a normal um, version of this and we can obviously change the color and the intensity of that mix so again I'm going to frame those using the node wrangler and now you can move them all in the frame now for a bit more realism, I'd like to add a little bit of texture. So I am going to grab a texture node, uh, sorry, a noise texture node, a color ramp. That's gonna help me control that noise texture. A mix RGB shader or node and a bump node. Now the bump node goes into the normal of the principled shader. And let me just get back to the normal view. The mix RGB we're going to connect up to the height in the bump node. I'm going to take the value from the last math node in our pattern section and connect that up to the color one slot of the mix shader. Then take the color ramp and put that in color two. Connect up the noise texture. And move the black value till about, it's, till about 0.4. And this looks a little strange at the moment, quite intense. Don't worry, we'll come back to that. Uh, we're going to take the value from here and plug that into the scale. And now we've got a nice rough texture going on, but it's a bit too much at the moment. So we're going to drop the strength on the bump node to 0.2. And that gives us a nice look there. Uh, I'm going to increase the detail on the noise texture to 10 just to soften that off a little bit. Increase the roughness to one, or maybe just take it down a little bit. And you can see there's just this, this sort of roughness going on through the fabric, which gives it sort of a little bit of crease look. Let's try 0.95. Uh, yeah, I think that'll work. Maybe increase the detail to 15. Uh, and again, we'll frame that stuff and we'll call it texture. Uh, 
And then to finish this off, just a couple of changes in the principled shader. Specular, we're going to change to 0 0.1 with the tint to 1. And roughness to 0 0.75. And that gives us a nice soft looking gingham cloth. So let's send that to render. I'm using the cycles render engine as usual. And I've got the sample set to 500, but to be honest, I could actually just drop that down to a couple of hundred and I'll still get a good result. And let's take a look. And there we go, less than 30 seconds to render that out as a piece of fabric. And I think it looks pretty realistic. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that and it's taught you something, even if just the framing. Uh, of course, if it has, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, leave any comments, requests or whatever in the comments below the video. And of course, subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.